Mouse moved into the treehouse in Mother Amal's garden in the village of Angelville where the children had invited it to live. Mouse being so small so as never ever to be seen and no one could tell if Mouse were a boy or a girl. Mouse said it made no difference. On this particular day all was very quiet in the garden. The children had just gotten up and were going to Granny Mabel's for breakfast when they noticed something new had come to Angelville. The top of Peter Oak Tree, the justice of the trees, was waving so gently. They found out that gentle wind, an old friend of Peter Oak Tree, had come at Peter's request because he loved to have his back scratched in the morning. Gentle wind would rustle through his branches and his leaves and oh, it was so beautiful. And then gentle wind, if there was no wind and a child were flying a kite, she would swoop down under the kite and go high up into the heavens with the kite. And there was so much joy. It was so beautiful. And gentle wind would not hurt anything. She did not believe in the violence of the tornado winds. And the tornado winds, the violent biker winds of the universe, heard that gentle wind would not participate in the violence and they created a blockade of heavy tornado winds surrounding Angelville and, and, and no rain clouds could arrive. 
the trees and the plants and the flowers and the people and the animals were all worried that, that the water would be gone. The biker winds sent word to Magic Mouse and the children that unless they sent Gentle Wind out to be punished because she would not be violent, no rain cloud would ever come to Angel Bill again. Well, Magic Mouse said, we will not surrender Gentle Wind to the forces of violence. And Magic Mouse called its friend the dot maker in the sky. Now, in case you didn't know it, the dot maker was responsible for all of the rainbows. All day long, he sat and made his beautiful colored dots into strips of rainbows that went high into the sky. And the dot maker said, I will make a rainbow roller coaster so high in the heavens that the violent tornado winds cannot come close to it and the rainbow roller coaster was created and when it was done gentle wind was put on top of it above the biker winds and she went out and very quietly without attracting attention gathered up the rain clouds and put them on the roller coaster one by one and the tornado winds were still not aware of what was going down or going up as the case may be and gentle wind and one by one, the rain clouds sailed and up and down on the roller coaster, and they arrived in Angelville, and the blockade was broken. And when the biker winds discovered how they had been tricked, that the blockade was broken, they said they will get their revenge. And Magic Mouse said, revenge will not accomplish anything. We will have the water. You cannot deny us that. And if you violent tornado winds insist on being violent, we will just ignore you. We will not pay any attention to you, for here love rules, and you may not have any power. And the clouds and the people and the children and the trees and the flowers were all happy, for everything had returned to normal, and violence once again could not win over nonviolence. And that's our story for today. Hey guys, we got a great film. It's the Silicon Kids from up in San Jose. Linda produced this marvelous show. And hey, l let's see what they say and what they found out because these are kids who are going out and seeing people. You like that? Oh, yeah, sounds great. How do you feel about kids interviewing people? I love it. I love it. I love it. Maybe they'll interview me. Maybe they'll interview this guy, Let the huh, Quibbles. Not me. I wouldn't give him the time of day. You don't talk to kids, huh? Ugh, kids, people. Ugh, terrible people. They... Well,. Thank God you're not the guy running it because these guys are good. Take it away, Silicon Kids. Hi, and welcome to Silicon Kids. I'm Melanie. I'm Trisha. I'm Nancy. I'm Annie. I'm Dale. And I'm Sunil. On today's show, Silicon Kids visits Nimitz School in Sunnyvale for its games from around the world family and cultural traditions shared assembly. We get to see the various multicultural games and dances performed by local students. Nimitz school students demonstrate traditional oriental folk games. The hand clapping club from Edenvale School in San Jose perform. Students from the Shule Mandela Academy in East Palo Alto perform a South African boot dance. And the Rope Skipping Club from Sutter School in Santa Clara amazes us with their talents. We also get a peek into a future segment of Silicon Kids. Sunil interviews Mark Summers and Robin Morella, stars of the Nickelodeon's television program, Double Dare, when they visited San Jose. Hope you enjoy our show. Silicon Kids visited Nimitz School in Sunnyvale. For its games from around the world, family and cultural traditions shared, assembly. Students from local schools shared their multicultural folk games. of a lot of 
hard work from Mr. Kaminsky. And will you join me in thanking Mr. Kaminsky? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Erkman, and also I must thank all the teachers and parents who made this possible. I, I have done a lot of work, and so have many other people, and I will thank them later. Without the creativity and flexibility of all the parents and teachers and the community members from other schools who come here, uh, it, it wouldn't happen. And I do want to say that this is a wonderful time to celebrate diversity. That's what we're doing. If we can celebrate diversity, we're all going to just be better and ready for tomorrow. Because if we know how to understand some other people, if we know how to be sensitive and aware of other people and about ourselves, we're going to be better friends. We can make friends, we can work with people if we know ourselves and we know other people. And one of the best ways to do that is to play games and to learn about other people through playing games. So, I think we're going to start off with um, uh, some foot juggling from our own students. Let's have Paul and Thomas and Tina and Peggy and, and Dave come on up. We're going to warm up with some foot juggling. Uh, Paul. So, uh, what do you call this game in Korean? Chiggy? Yeah, Chiggy. And where did you learn it? From your uh, friends? Yeah. You want to show us Chiggy? You and Thomas? Okay. Peggy shows us a game from Taiwan. Okay. And this is David. And uh, tell us a little variation that you know about the game, David. Okay, this is uh, called the Happy Sack. It's called the game Happy Sack. And um, it's kind of like their game, but you, have to use, you can hit it with any part of your body, but your hands or your arms. <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Fujitaka and Mrs. Uh, Suyoshi have helped to organize this, and many other Japanese mothers and fathers have helped. So they need to come through, and they're going to come up. Let's give them a hand, please. We play this game every New Year or enter New Year for me. Now, I'm going to show you how to play this game. Two people could play at a time. First, one person covers his eyes with a towel, and there is a board of space with an eye closed. Now, she has to, he has to guess and put eyes or whatever into the face and make a complete face. Of course, he can he can't see anything. Now let's see how it works.
in a hand clapping club from Eatonville School. How many of you learned some hand clapping this week? Okay, eyes forward and watch this club. Would you please listen to Gwen from Eatonville School? Hi, we are the hand, Eatonville Hand Clapping Club and we are going to demonstrate some of the hand claps we learned. Our first election is Say Say Open Me. This is called the South African Boot Dance. African men that work to 
my mom used to do this on the after a long day of work on break times too. So we're gonna do it for you. while the vine was twirling. Early in the 1900s, in the late 1800s, they would do the same turning, but they changed it into a rope, and they'd start doing tricks. They'd add tricks to their, to their jumping. And the children would add little rhymes to it, like teddy bear, teddy bear, turn around, teddy bear, teddy bear, touch the ground. Children would sing, and the jumpers would jump. 17 years ago, rope skipping took a new twist. The music is in the background, and the children jump tricks with their ropes. So it's, it's kind of evolved to this style of jumping here. We're going to show you single rope jumping. We're going to show you Chinese wheel jumping, which was found in China. It's a style of jumping that was found in China. And then, of course, our double dutch. Um, let me show you just a little bit of Chinese wheel. Two people, come on up. The Chinese wheel, each person comes up with their own rope and they exchange the inside handle. So one of the girls is holding her rope and the handle of her partner's rope. Okay, and they would turn the one rope, and then they turn the second rope, and they would jump. Okay?
and I hope that you continue to sharing, continue to share your games. That's all we have for this assembly. Thank you Thank for you, coming. Mr. Kaminsky. Boys and girls, I want to say a special, special, special Mr. Erkman, thank you to all of you for being such a good audience. And I want to thank all of you who've come to visit. It's the kind of support and time that you as adults give to our children. Hope you have enjoyed our visit to Nimitz School and their Multicultural Folk Game Assembly. Let's take a peek into a future segment for an upcoming program. Stars of the popular Nickelodeon program, Double Dare, visited San Jose in a Double Dare live tour, which Silicon Kids attended. and move your hips back and forth in the same direction. And if you do this properly, you'll see that this will go completely around, just like that, all right? Now, for some reason, the kids have a hard time doing it. The girls are better at this, I'm not sure why, but when we get done doing this, if you can't accomplish this, we're gonna have to bring two grown-ups up here on stage to see if they can, all right? Hands behind your back, work together, 20 seconds on the clock. On your get set! And Sunil interviews the stars. Hi, I'm Sunil with Silicon Kids at the San Jose State Event Center with Mark Summers, the host of Double Dare. And the lovely Robin, Sunil, right over here. The lovely Robin is here. <laughs> so, Mark, what exactly are you doing here today? I have no idea. I got on a plane. I ended up here. Actually, we're doing the Double Dare Roadshow. And we've been touring uh, throughout the country since the end of January to sell out audiences, which we're doing once again here in San Jose. And we've been taking uh, what we do on TV and uh, applying it to uh, folks live and in person, and it's been going real well. Okay. And uh, is today going to be like the television show? A little bit. Uh, what we try to do, though, is get the kids more involved. On TV, only four or five or six kids get to play the game, but here we're going to get about 30 different people up on stage to do physical challenges and also participate in some of the stunts we do on What Would You Do, uh, which is another show we do on Nickelodeon. And some parents. We're going to yeah. bring some parents up on stage, too. And they seem to like it almost uh, better than the kids. Right. <laughs> so, uh, can you tell us what sort of things will be happening today? Well, Robin, why don't you tell them? We're going to do, uh, well, we do physical challenges on the show, so we're going to be doing all of our physical challenges. Uh, things like throwing a marshmallow in a cup or cracking eggs on your head. We don't want to give away too much, no. but we bring families up and then we play um, just like a real game you see on TV. We, we play that on the stage. So it should be lots of fun. What kind of prizes can youngsters win? Well, <laughs> we give away anything from computer games to helmets to certificates, lots of fun things. Yeah, like yesterday we, give... we had some TVs and some cameras, so right. it differs from show to show. Mm -hmm. More of this interview on a future program. Well, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please join us next time here on Silicon Kids.
makes you slip and you want to bruise their lip, use a word. Use a word. When someone grabs your book and you go for your left hook, use a word. Use a word. Because we can work it out. That's what words were invented for. We can work it out. It's the best way there is for sure to fight over something is absurd. So for Pete's sake, use a word. Someone steals your ball and you want to make them fall, use a word. Use a word. When someone plays a trick and you're winding up to kick, use a word. Use a word. Because we can work it out, that's what words were invented for. We can work it out, it's the best way there is for sure to fight over something is absurd. So for Pete's sake, use a word. There's so many different words, they do all kinds of things. Some can make us smile and laugh while others hurt and sting. We get to choose the words we use each and every day. So when it's time to use a word, be careful what you say. Cause we can work it out, that's what words were invented for. We can work it out, it's the best way there is for sure to fight over something is absurd. So for Pete's sake, use a word. Someone hurts your pride and you want to run and hide, use a word. Use a word! When someone thinks of you in a way that isn't true, use a word. Use a word! Everybody's different, take a look around and see. You're the only you I know and I'm the only me. Because we're all so different, there'll be times we'll disagree. But I just want to say, my friend, that that's all right with me. Because we can work it out, that's what words were invented for. We can work it out, it's the best way there is for sure to fight over something is absurd. So for Pete's sake, and Jamie's, and Nikki's, and Juan's, and Jamal's, and Debbie's, and Aaron's, and Crystal's, and David's, and Andy's, use a word.
prelude in A major by Frédéric Chopin was the music I danced to for my first public appearance at the age of 16 at assembly at Washington Irving High School in New York. Here it was a part of a work called Four Romantic Dances using four different selections by Chopin. entertainment to the music of Offenbach was the largest work I created during this period. I portrayed 19 characters in all. Here is seen the Marquis who is holding his annual party in the public garden for a wide variety of friends. The big event is when he hangs up a sign announcing the Can Can, which is performed by three dancing girls who come out following the exit of the Marquis. doesn't really get underway because the redhead manages to make off with a diamond ring from one of the spectators. Blondie comes in now, and seeing that everyone is gone, is furious that the man with the diamond ring ran off with the red ring. The reprise consists of all the characters making a last appearance. Two girls looking for two boys who are looking for two girls.
the dandy. The flirt. The waiter who comes in and picks up the glasses now that the party is over. And finally, the master of ceremonies who comes in with a red banner to announce the end of another of life's daily entertainments. In 1980, filming of my repertoire ceased. A large work entitled The Inheritance, with a stage set in front scrim, was never documented. Today, this scenery is being utilized in another work called Trio, which is being performed today. In 1983, a new era dawned for the Amargosa Opera House. Thomas J. Willette came and assumed the stage managing duties and later on became a permanent fixture in my larger works, usually ending the evening's program. The first of these productions was a melodrama with a mix of dance, acting, and pantomime called The Second Mortgage. The second ballet was a ballet bouffe entitled Cupid's Mistake in which I played three parts, Mr. Willett, two parts, the medicine man and Cupid, which you see here. The third was a work called Come Back Vodva, or Don't Call Us, We'll Call You. Here you see the stage set, Goldie's rehearsal hall, where the scene takes place. And the final curtain, a row of dancing girls. The fourth is Looking for Mr. Wright, with Tom Willett playing the part of Victoria Hoops looking for a husband, and myself at the end, the husband Victoria Hoops is looking for. Here you see me as the gossipy Mrs. Picklebottom. The fifth ballet is Command Performance, a farce about two ballet stars who come back for a return gala after retirement of 25 years. Here I am as Daphne and Tom Willett as Apollo, the parts these stars play in the gala. Here is the forest scene in black light. The next production we did was called The Farewell Letter to the music of Mozart. Tom Willett plays the part of Count Mustachio who must say farewell to his three mistresses and naturally, I play the three mistresses. The reason he must say farewell to his three mistresses, he is to marry tomorrow. At the end of the ballet, it turns out that one of his three mistresses is the one he is betrothed. This is the Amargosa Opera House today. New theater seats were installed in 1983 and the ceiling lit with special lighting. The performing schedule continues. New stage works continue to be created, which have yet to be documented. Another decade has passed, and with it, the opening of the Amargosa Hotel in December of 1990. The Amargosa Opera House and its adjacent Amargosa Hotel combine a partnership to create a retreat from today into the past.
See me beautiful, look for the best in me It's what I really am, and all I want to be It may take some time, it may be hard to find But see me beautiful, see me beautiful Each and every day, could you take a chance Could you find a way to see me shining through in everything I do? But see me beautiful. See me beautiful, look for the best in me, it's what I really am, and all I want to be, it may take some time, it may be hard to find, but see me beautiful, see me beautiful, each and every day, could you take a chance? Could you find a way to see me shining through in everything I do and see me beautiful? So if you want to join the Magic Mouse loving gang, right girls? So all you got to do is call 889-3100 and become a member without cost. It's free. The Magic Mouse Loving Gang. And now that we finished the program for today, why don't you try something? Turn the television off. You don't want to look at all that violence and all that other stuff. Go out and have some fun. Sing our song with us. Remember the song? I'd rather be me than watch TV. I think I'll go and hug a tree. I'd rather be me. I'd rather be free and live life in simplicity. So let's go, find some balloons, blow them up, have some fun, but get away from the box. Even get away from us for a while. Okay, see ya, see ya.